So back in 2001, I took the craziest coaster trip I had ever taken with five other guys that I had never met in real life. <laughs> So back in 2001, I was living out in California, hadn't traveled a whole lot around to see and ride a whole lot of coasters, and found myself in a situation where I had an offer to do this trip that at the time really was a bit on the crazy side, but it turned into a fantastic trip. Let me give you a little bit of background about the first real roller coaster trip I ever took. Back in 2001, the internet was really still kind of a new thing as far as people using it. We had been using up to that point a thing called Usenet, which actually used to use your computers, dial into a slow modem, get that wonderful little handshake sound. Of So there's some history for you young people. <laughs> and you would download all your messages, and I was part of a group called Rec Roller Coaster. Well, as the internet actually grew, there was an early website called rollercoaster.com that had an email list that worked kind of similar called Roller Coaster Talk. Well, the gentleman who owned Roller Coaster Talk decided that he was done, he had some other things he was going to do, and so he was shutting down the site. Which meant that this email list that there were uh, probably around a thousand of us that were a part of, was shutting down and we were going to lose it. So at the same time, Yahoo had actually been starting these things called Yahoo Groups, which essentially functioned the same way. Long story short, I ended up creating a group on Yahoo that everybody kind of migrated to and Roller Coaster Talk became Coaster Talk on Yahoo. And I was the lead moderator and the guy in charge with some of the other people. It turned out really well. We had a great time. A lot of people built friendships through emails. One of the things that came up was some of the people started razzing me that here I was, one of the leaders, moderators of this group, and I lived out in California, and I had never been out east of the Mississippi. I'd never been to Ohio. I'd never been to all these parts that everybody into roller coasters talks about, which was kind of sad. So a few of the guys early in 2001 start talking, hey, we need to really get you on one of these trips. Why don't we start working with you and let's book you on a trip and let's get you out here with us. And of course, I was a married dad. I was a stay at home dad taking care of my kids while my wife taught. So our budget wasn't a lot, but we worked things out. And I ended up flying out from California to Cleveland, Ohio, thanks to one of the guys who was a pilot for an airline, got me a really cheap airline ticket landed and met with five other guys from this list. One other guy who was close to my age, so right around 30, and then we had four other guys who were all around like 17 to 19 years old. So the two old guys became the drivers and the other young guys uh, got to ride along. Got to meet these four guys. Brian was the other older one. Josh was really the guy who kind of helped put things together. His home base, his home was kind of home base, and it was his parents that loaned us a big large passenger van to use. And then we had Jeremy, Corey, and Nate. Really, when you look at the six of us, we were really all from drastically different walks of life. I hadn't met any of them. They had all kind of met various ways, but not all together. And there were still a couple that hadn't met at all. And it was one of those deals that this could go really good or really, really bad. <laughs> Josh was wonderful. Uh, the first thing we did after I got there was we actually headed over to Chippewa Lake which was a closed amusement park that was basically sitting there to rot. And we kind of wandered around a little bit. Don't do this. It's trespassing, guys. <laughs> but it was really kind of a neat thing to do at the time. But we took some pictures and, and explored a little. Just kind of a neat start for the trip. And then we had five parks to do in four days, essentially. We were going to be really trying to cram as much in as we possibly could. The centerpiece of the trip was Phoenix Fall Fun Fest at Knobles Grove in Elysburg, Pennsylvania. It's a coaster event, coaster enthusiast event with costumes and fun. And, and that was really why we were there. And we're trying to build in as much else as we could around this thing. And so we got all set. And our very first real park that we headed to that first night was Cedar Point. Of course, never been to Cedar Point. We're heading up 
trying to catch it on the way out to Dorney. Our plan is, as soon as we're done at Cedar Point, to drive all the way out through Pennsylvania and the next day be at Dorney Park. So we want to cram as much as we can to Cedar Point before we hit the road. And I've already told that story about Cedar Point in another video. There's a link for it up there or down in the description. You can check that out. And please forgive the really bad green screen. I was learning at the time. Anyways, Cedar Point ends up being a disaster. Not a good day at the park. We load up wet, drenched, and we start driving all the way out to Pennsylvania. Most of it overnight, we get to our hotel at something like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, something like that. And we're tired. We've got one room booked for six guys because we're trying to do this thing on a shoestring budget for everybody. Let's just say six guys in one hotel room is uh, very interesting. I was very grateful because they did decide as a group that the drivers should be the guys to get beds, which was nice because <laughs> I was one of the drivers and I was the older guy. And uh, so Brian and I got beds and the other guys, we kind of split things up and we made it work. Uh, <laughs> we definitely made it work. And we got some rest for the night. Crashed out, woke up early in the morning, at probably like 8.30, got a little bit of breakfast and immediately headed over to Dorney Park that morning. We're there right at opening, wanting to catch it quick and get everything in the park we could as fast as we could because we still had to go to Elysburg for Knobles. We actually hit every coaster in that park multiple times. The crowds were small and it, it was really a fun, fantastic day. Talon was brand new, uh, loved Steel Force. Yes, I do like Morgan Hypers. We had a great time just getting to know each other. Dorney was the first place I had ever been on a real whip. They don't have them out in the West. And if you don't know what a whip is, you got to look it up. It's not something you beat people with. Get your minds out of the gutter. <laughs> no, it's it's really a neat classic ride. And it just had a ball with that. And getting to experience some things that don't exist in the younger parks out West. To be able to ride these things are classics. So absolutely loved that. And then once we finished up at Dorney, and it was shortly after lunch, we all loaded up into the cargo van again, and we hauled as quick as we could to get down to Knobles Grove, enjoying the beautiful fall colors and the road construction over Pennsylvania. <laughs> so we get down, and now keep in mind, this is October 2001. So one of the things that's always kind of in our mind is 9-11, which had been a month beforehand. In fact, even when I got on the airline, there was still a little hesitation because it was still fresh in the mind and the planes had been flying again for a couple weeks, but there was still a little trepidation like, is everything going to be okay? That's all there kind of in the background, but we're able to forget about that as we're driving around. We get down to Knobles and have a fantastic time. Phoenix Fall Fun Fest is part of the Covered Bridge Festival. And they have extra food, they've got late night coaster rides, they've got people dressed up in costumes, and it's just a lot of fun. We all dressed up in convict outfits, prison outfits with the white and black stripes, and we called ourselves the Coaster Cons. Kind of short, a play off of the coaster convention for the coaster enthusiasts, and had some fun with that, we at least all matched and had a good time, but some of the costumes that people wore were just outstanding. That night for me stands out for the Phoenix, which was an amazing roller coaster at night. Just fantastic. The flyers that they have there too, if you don't know what snapping on a flyer is, oh my goodness, it, it was amazing. So we had a great time with that. And then it came time to find a place to sleep. Josh had been working hard trying to make all these arrangements for us because he was kind of the home guy. And he told us that he'd worked with some friends he knew were going to be there and they were going to be able to put us up in their trailer in the campground that's right next door. I don't remember what happened if his friends didn't make it or what but at the end of the night we kind of realized that uh, we don't have any place to sleep that night we don't have a hotel we don't have a reservation we got nothing a couple of the other people that we got to know there and had met were really nice and offered us a couple of beds i got one early i was exhausted from driving and the overnights and everything else and so they kind of said well you know hey there's a bed in the back you can go get that and I crawled up and I was out. From what I heard later, I had snored pretty good. And I'm sorry, guys, if you're the ones who put me up, but thank you. But I, I was out pretty quick and I didn't have any clue what happened to the rest of the guys. Well, it turns out at least four of them, and it might have been all five, ended up without any other place to sleep. And they slept in the van. 
They basically took the long benches in this passenger van and that was their beds for the night. And to make it worse, it was cold. I mean, it got down in like the 30s or something like that. So I woke up in the morning feeling pretty good, grabbed my bag, walked down to the community bathroom, took a quick shower, cold shower, <laughs> got myself cleaned up, walked out and went, oh, hi guys, you didn't have any place to sleep? Mm. But we all kind of struggled, they got themselves up and moving, again, semi-early in the morning, and we were on the road again, off to Lakemont Park in Pennsylvania, because we still had more to do there. Lake Bond is kind of the follow-up to Phoenix Fall Fun Fest, and it's the home of the oldest operating roller coaster in the United States, Leap the Dips. So that was really kind of the goal. It's let's hit that and catch the couple other coasters in the park. Leap the Dips is an awesome coaster. It's a side rail. There's nothing actually holding you on. It's just keeping you from falling off the tracks. But it only goes like 15 miles an hour. So it, just a neat ride. A lot of fun. The other thing that I learned at Lake Mott is don't ride a chance toboggan especially not if you've been waiting to go to the restroom, because riding it with a full bladder is painful. Don't do that. So we got actually almost everything at Lake Mountain Inn in a couple hours. We hit the rides. We had some lunch that they had as part of the deal there. And then we were back in the van and on the road back out to Ohio to another little place called Geauga Lake. Although at the time it was called Six Flags Worlds of Adventure. It had merged with SeaWorld, and they were open that way, and we're hoping to get there before the park closes for the night so I can at least get a couple rides in. We pull up, we get parked, we've got like three hours to go till it closes, and start to walk up to the gates, and we realize that there's all these people coming out, and nobody going in. Okay, what's going on? So we walk up to one of the ticket booths where we see somebody inside and ask, you know, hey, is the park open? What's happening? Sorry, we closed for the night. It was a slow day, so we're letting everybody go. Okay, but it's supposed to be open for three more hours. Is it not? And she slams the window. Oh, okay. The one thing that was different, though, yes, they closed early. It was a slow day. There weren't that many people in, and so they decided it wasn't worth staying open. But everybody that was leaving the park, they were given a free readmission ticket to. Now, since we didn't get in the park, we didn't get a readmission, but it was they were at least doing that nicely for the people coming out, and... Yeah, it wasn't a great interaction with the lady at the window, but she was probably tired after a really long, hard day. In any case, we got to the gates, but didn't get in the park. Six Flags World Adventure was going to have to wait until spring of 2002, when I had the blessing to be able to kind of sort of repeat some of the trip, hit Cedar Point in that park, and then hit some other new ones. But that's a whole nother story. In any case, at that point, we realized, well, we're not going to be able to get in. We're not going to get those rides. I at least had a couple of the parks work out and had a couple, the ones with the most coasters that didn't. But all right, you know, hey, we'd had fun. I've been able to say I had been there. And we hopped into the van and we started heading back to Josh's place where we we're going to stay that night and I was going to fly out the next day. Funny story on this. We're heading back towards Josh's home. And again, Josh is young. He's like 17, 18. And so I kind of said, hey, Josh, you got your cell phone. Give your parents a call. Let them know we're on the way. No, it's okay. They know we're coming. No, Josh, just be nice, is the older guy. Call your parents and let them know. Really, it's okay. They don't need to know. And here's where I could tell I was tired, because I still get razzed about this. And I kind of snapped a little bit and went, Josh, call your parents. So half the time now when we still write and tease each other, I still get the, Josh, call your parents, thrown at me. <laughs> it had been a long trip. We get back to Josh's house. Those of us staying to visit are going to kind of crash in the basement. We're kind of laying out beds. And, and here's where 9-11 came back. As we're sitting there starting to get settled down, Josh's dad yells out and says, yeah, hey, you might want to come see this. And we walk upstairs and look on the TV. And it was that point when we started launching the missile strikes, starting to retaliate for 9-11. As I'm sitting in Ohio while I lived in California waiting for a flight the next day after they had grounded everything after 9-11. And I'm going, oh man, I hope this doesn't mean my flight gets canceled. It didn't. I did get on the plane the next day. I got home just fine. But it was kind of an interesting wrap-up. It, it was a fun trip, though. It was a great time meeting these guys that I had only emailed and gotten to know that way. So normally I tell people, don't just take off with somebody you meet on the internet. 
But we had all kind of networked enough that we had a pretty good feel for each other. It was a blast, and I, I was really blessed, like I said, the next spring to come back and hit Cedar Point and the Six Flags and Kings Island and Holiday World and Indiana Beach and a couple other parks as well in the spring. So we really had a great trip there. But it was a wonderful time. I'm grateful I had the opportunity to do it. And that's where Cedar Point fits in as part of the worst trip ever. <laughs> Wasn't the worst trip. The trip itself was great. It just happened to be one day. So I'd love to hear if you've ever taken some road trips like that or done some crazy things. Share it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and share too. Thank you so much for watching and God bless. Never been to all these parks that everybody talked to. And I'd never been to any... All these <laughs> Lake Mont Lake Mont <laughs>